Hello, my name is Jerry and you're watching 3DHP. On this video, we're going to replace the white PTFE tubing with Capricorn tubing. Capricorn tubing works great. TH3D Tough tube works great. And I've even tried CC Tree off Amazon and had no issues with it. But the best that's out there would be the Capricorn. I ordered this off Amazon. It came with two fittings. One for the hot end and one for the extruder. And let me show you what to do. First thing you want to do is to heat up the, your printing temperature of 200 to 210. Extrude a little bit of filament by squeezing the gear and feeding it in by hand or turning the knob and extrude a little bit of filament. As soon as you do that, pull it back out quickly and completely remove your filament. Any that's extruded down below hanging down, just pull off. Go ahead and cool down your printer. Because the Z-axis on this printer moves so easily, I would suggest taking a cup out of your, a cup out of your kitchen, put it underneath the Z-axis so it won't slide down on you. Let me show you how you take off the cup leak on the hot end. On the back of your extruder, on the back of your hot end, closest to the extruder, you'll see one small bolt right here. You want to remove the one bolt only. You'll see two, but you only need to remove the one. The one's on the inside between the wheels. Take the supplied wrench, screw it all the way out. And then be sure you drop your wrench like I just did. Once that happens, this will be loose. On the right side here, if you are facing the printer, there's a locking tab at the top and the bottom that grabs the metal bracket, and in the center there's a plastic pin. You simply peel it out a little bit, wiggle it, and that will come loose. Let me show you a close-up of that. You can see there's a small tab there in the middle that sticks out. Right below that top screw, right in about the middle, there's a small plastic tab. Now coming back around the front, if your hot end is still hot, wear a glove, mine is cooled down, you can remove the plastic locking tab, set it aside, you can remove the one that's on the extruder, just grab it with your fingernails and pull it off. Take your cutters and carefully cut the um, zip tie, the two zip ties. Do not be careful you don't cut your wires right next to PFE tube, PTFE tube. Now the compression fitting that's on the extruder, you can simply press it in slightly and your PTFE tube will pull right out. Take your wrench, loosen up the fitting. You just unscrew it all the way. Once it's unscrewed all the way, give it a firm pull and it'll pull right out. If your hot end is still warm when you're doing this, it'll come out a lot easier. Mine was pretty cold. Open up your package with your new Capricorn tubing. I believe it comes with a meter on the one I bought. You got a cool little Capricorn sticker here to post of all your other stickers. Take one of each size fitting out. Now, whenever you cut, whenever your uh, PTFE tube has to go down the hot end, it has to be perfectly flush with the hot end. If it's cut at the slightest little angle, it'll leak and you'll have a clog, and then you're going to have a failed print. You're going to wonder, wow, what happened? So, pick up a pair of these cutters. They sell these online. You can buy them in kits with the PTFE if you don't have one. It'll cut it perfectly flush. And even though this just came in the package and it looks perfectly flush, let's recut off just a little tiny bit of it to make sure. Simply put it in the track, snap it, and now you know that side is flush. 
take your old PTFE and let's measure it. Put it up against the Capricorn, slide it down, measure the same distance. Take your cutter once again and snap it and cut it. Now it's good to always flush cut both ends. You, sure, the side of the extruder doesn't need to be flush cut because it doesn't matter. It's not going to produce a leak only on the hot end. But if you flush cut both of them, when you lay this down, you're not going to say, okay, which one was perfect and which one was crooked. Just cut them off both flush and you won't have to worry about it. Take your new coupler. It has some uh, sealer right on the threads to help keep it in place. Take your new coupler. Go ahead and screw it in hand tight. Now it's all the way hand tight. Take your little wrench and back it off three quarters of a turn. Take your PTFE tube. Shove it all the way down the nozzle. Make sure it's tight. It's all the way down there. Okay, that's good. Once you do that, holding with one hand, take your other hand. Let's tighten that fitting back up. Don't get it too tight. Just snug it up. Take your locking tab once again. And snap it back in place. And if you're wondering, well, wait a minute, Jerry, why are you re why are you replacing those fittings? Just because you got new ones? Typically, a lot of these fittings, uh, they don't have metal teeth inside on a lot of them. This one appears, I can't really tell if it has plastic teeth or metal teeth. But when you press on them, you can kind of tell how springy they are. If they're not real springy, they're going to wind up failing on you. Let's check this old one. Okay, the one that was on the hot end is, is very springy, and it does have metal teeth. So this is a perfectly good fitting that I just took off of it. It'll go back in the bag. There's no reason to change it. If it has a lot of compression, it's real springy, and you can look down the side and see metal teeth, that's a good fitting. So this already had a good fitting on it. Let's go ahead and put your cover back on. There, Like I say, there's a hook on the top, a hook on the bottom, and a little hole in the center. You simply put the line up the hole in the center and hook it back over the edges. And since I don't have my glasses on, this is going to take me a minute. All right, there it is. And once that's on, hold it in place. And the screw that went somewhere, I'll put back in. All right, that screw is lost forever, so I had to go in my uh, bin over there and dig another one out. Now just take your uh, little Allen wrench, spin the new one back in. I have some other wrenches I bought that look like screwdriver handles, and they got Allens on the end, and they work much better than these little tiny wrenches, but. For the sake of the video, let's use the little wrenches that it came with. Because if you're a new person, you may not have these other wrenches. And put that bolt back in. Just snug it down. Don't get it tight. And that's good to go. And after looking again at this little fitting that was screwed into the extruder, this is like they had in a lot of older machines. This particular fitting is no good. Not very good. Because if you're printing and it pops off and you're going to have filament running everywhere and you're just going to have a big old spaghetti mess of uh, unmelted filament. So definitely replace both of them. Take the new brass fitting. Screw it in hand tight. Now you're screwing this into the plastic extruder. I don't recommend getting it tight, but I'm just going to put a slight turn on it just to barely snug it and that's good to go. Take your PTFE tubing. Let's go ahead and take the. Oh, there it went. I would look for that thing forever. There's that little tiny screw. 
run your hot end all the way to one side just so you get the correct angle on this new PT, uh, PTFE tubing and press it in. Take your locking clip. This is late at night when I'm filming this video. I probably should have already went to bed, but I wanted to get this done. And just pop it on, that'll hold that in place. Grab your two extra zip ties that came with the printer if you still don't have them. Use some different ones. And let's re zip tie this. Now, when you zip, put a zip tie on this PTFE tubing and these wires, don't get it tight. Just snug it up and stop. You don't want to crush the wires. You don't want to keep the PTFE tubing. That looks pretty good. And then clip off the excess. You want them tight enough to hold it in place so they don't slide down the line, but you don't want them too tight. And the number one reason that you're replacing this PTFE tubing, the white PTFE that the printer comes with, the it can't withstand the temperatures that a lot of these hot ends get and you'll get a burnt end you'll get a clog and then you're gonna have to take it off you're gonna have to get out your blue cutters you have to recut that white end shove it back down in there in the meantime your print failed so it's best from the get-go just buy Capricorn or a tough tube from TH3D and replace it it can withstand much hotter higher temperatures going all the way down to the nozzle where the white can't withstand those kind of temperatures and the white PTFE tubing is a little more slop for the PLA the filament to move back and forth when it's extruding and retracting and it's a, the Capricorn tubing is a little bit more precise on its tolerances that doesn't allow it to move back and forth much so in my opinion you know there's a lot of people who use a white PTFE tube and they're perfectly happy with it but then when they get a burned in the clog when they got they got a failed print they got to come clip it off put it back together so I said I would suggest just buying the correct thing from the get-go get some Capricorn tubing or TH3D tubing replace it and it's very simple so so now we have an extra uh, thinning for the extruder and one for the hot end I have an extra some extra Capricorn tubing for next time and that's about it and I got a cool little sticker that I'll put on my uh, enclosure that I have on one of my CR10s I, please like and subscribe everybody I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick up this Capricorn tubing on Amazon there's some other cool discounts down there from different companies and some affiliate links. And if you'd like to help me out, uh, please like and subscribe, share the video. Thanks for watching and happy printing.